What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to WCS Americas. Bet you didn't expect that one. Well, you won't be expecting that. I thought in I was this solo casting. Either. He my just popped up out of the ground. Oh my God! That's exactly what we're going to be expecting in this series. We're going to be expecting absolute nonsense. So a lot of lifts. Maybe. Were you were you like a, a DT uncloaking? Because those or do you ghost uncloaking? I like to were think you an unburrowing in, widow mine? in the PVP meta. I like to think that I was being lifted up by a phoenix. Oh, okay. There you go. Nice. Do you even lift, bro? <laughs> Not like that. Not like uh, What's up, guys? My name is Fear Dragon, of course, and Nathanius. If you guys don't know us at this point, well, then... What are you doing? Well, then... You the, should hit us up anyway. All you need to know is that Nathanius has been casting since 2011. 20, 2012 is what 2012, the graphic says. Right. Yeah. And then he got outdone by Zombie Grab, and we had to remove and replace the graphic, because she's been casting since 2011. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I'm, you know what? I just don't have enough passion. That's number one complaint I get these days, and it's true. <laughs> if only I had started commentating StarCraft since before I was born, maybe I would be close, you know? Well, guys, one of the close. best ways you can help restore Nathanius' passion is every single one of those War Chest skins, 25% of the proceeds go toward Nathanius' passion, and the other 25% <laughs> go toward esports initiatives in 2019. Can Heck we no. legally say that? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, but you know what? I'll deal with the consequences of that later. Um, of course, guys, this Protoss versus Protoss is going to be the winner's match. Please be weird. Please be a weird I match. Am, I'm really hoping we get exactly what we want as we start down here in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. The flashiest man alive. He is Root Gaming's Puck. Brandon Qual, because he qualified for WCS Winter. Jeez. He's a, he's a base guy from North Dakota. His opponent in the Northwest, hailing from Taiwan, known as one of the cheese masters of StarCraft. He is Haas. Yes, it's happening. Woo -hoo -hoo. I was so scared he was going to play some okay. boring style again. So heads up, guys. If you, have, if you have about 30 seconds, which is about how much time you have before this game gets awesome, then you should go check out GGE Mini 19's Twitter, where you will find a fabulous tweet if you scroll back through the history when the map pool came out of King's Cove and all of the places you can cannon rush on this map. You can cannon rush right here, you can cannon rush right here, you can cannon rush right here, you can cannon rush, uh, I think, over here, these things over you here. You disgust this, me. And all of these are two or three pylon wall offs. So, Haas. Going to the maximum, going to try and find some nice places to lay down a couple of cheeky pylons. It looks like he's going to this location. This is a three pylon. Oh, my God. Okay. This is what? not the normal wall up. Uh, this is... What is happening? I, Print F is having an aneurysm somewhere. <laughs> okay. He can't, you know what? I think that was actually... He made a mistake. He, did he think that he needed more than... No, I think that was... I feel like that might have been a mistake that he covered up. But now he's going to be able to make the most of it. He throws on a gateway, so that's going to have a lot more hit points. And of course, if it gets up, he can throw it oh out back at home. Puck is supply. Oh, he was yeah, yeah. for a little bit yeah. there. Just had the pylon going up further down south. A zealot. But he needs the gateway. He needs the gateway to get stalkers. That's the problem. So he's trying to use the zealot to block out this probe from getting out more cannons. And now, Haas, I don't actually know how I feel about these cannons because. Sure, it's going to be good, but the probe it does actually make its way around. Oh, I was going to say, oh, that cannon's going to that cannon does oh. not get denied. That's really big. Stopping the stalker from finishing is, I think, this one of the most important things that you can do. But the, mm -hmm. the backup safety pylon is here. The emergency generators online. Uh, these dragons. three cannons are in range of this pylon. This is the problem. Now, normally, what you're going to want to do as a Protoss player in this situation is you want to get up shield right? batteries, you want to get up stalkers. Oh, you yeah. can pick away at things, and the shield batteries will keep your stalkers alive, but you have to be careful with those stalkers. The second stalker is not going to get out. He has another gateway coming, or sorry, a robo coming up behind us who's going to go for Immortals, but this is already a very dicey spot just because the Cyber Core is also in range. It's going to reset the tech of Puck. He can't mine from his Gas Geyser. This is not a great start for the Root Gaming Protoss. Yeah, this is a tough spot to be in, and he is going to get the Robotics Facility, which will be nice. He could try to use Immortals to Ooh. bust through this. Uh, Puck actually has a probe inside the main base of Haas. Yeah, that, that's weird. That could come back to bite him as well. Uh, you know what? Though, he's not getting Warp Gate anytime soon. He doesn't have the Gateway. He doesn't have, he's about to lose the Cyber Core. So he's gonna, it's gonna take him a hot second to get the rest of that stuff up. What's scary here is that the follow-up for Haas is gonna be here as well, which is now the Cybernetics Core is finished and he has gas mining. He can either go for a Stargate or he can even add, add on a couple of 
Oh, he's gonna go for the depth, so the depth can. You can put a battery behind the. Uh, oh yeah. Too, right? That is actually something that you should definitely be thinking about doing, as uh, as long as he has the minerals for it. But this is a pretty heavy mineral investment already. Getting the gas deal is a big deal as well. This really limits Puck's ability to get up a Stargate or to afford a lot, even multiple Immortals while Stalkers are also being produced at the same time. It's tough. This is a really tough spot for Puck. Yeah, this is, uh, this is just one of those awkward things. I mean, let's be honest. When you put up the title card that Haas was playing in today's group, I think a lot of people were a little bit disappointed. We didn't get to see shenanigans in his first match, but we get to start off the winner's match with Haas being as Haasy as Haas can pass. Okay, so the two adepts are going to be problematic. I do like that Puck was able to shield battery up his shield battery, healing the healer, and keeps that alive. And now he's taking out the forward photon cannon. It's just the adepts he has to worry about for a little bit because the Stargate follow-up is back at home for Haas. He likely is going to be thinking about something like an Oracle, but this immortal with the shield batteries, even if the shield batteries are lower in hit points, as long as he deals with these adepts, he can start knocking down this wall pretty quickly. Yep, Stargate is on the way for Haas, looks like, back home. So the cannons are gonna stall, hold him in there, deny that gas that we talked about for as long as possible. Yeah, he cancels the other shield battery. He's like, you know what? Uh, still can't take his gas geyser though, because this photon cannon is in range of the gas geyser, so this Haas still is, hurts fuck. Haas's warp gate is almost ready, by the way, mm -hmm. so he can he could throw a few more depths in there if he wants very soon. Yep, he's gonna uh, go into Phoenix. Okay, uh, that's gonna be a bit interesting. Well, his opponent doesn't have a cyber core, so Phoenix. Would yeah. Be good. No. Oh wait, Puck got. Oh my God, Puck he got another it, gas. Okay. Well, this gas geyser. Oh. Protoss player has oh, never been right. happier about the assimilator hit point nerf than Puck is. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I feel like it actually did affect Zerg versus Protoss the most, and then maybe PvP. Well, maybe PvP the most. That was in PvT too, man. The number of cheesers who steal your gas and, and really uh, and PvT. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone cannon rushes me as Terran, they always ah, uh, that's the true, gas. that's true. Nine hundred health assimilators were yeah. ex insanely triggered. I guess I'm so used to the pro uh, Terran points having their gas guys that, by that point. Yeah. Well, nowadays, because you're yeah. proxying, you have both <laughs> gases. Well, I do cannon rush on an account in the cannons clan tag, and then I open up with saying GLHF cannon rushing. So nice. They usually take their second gas in time. Uh, warp gate technology going to be extremely delayed here, like you said, for Puck. The Phoenix come on in, but remember that one Phoenix is not enough to pick off those probes. You do need at least two because the shield batteries do heal units in the air these days. Ooh, you let the shade finish on the adept. Now that's Sour maybe a bit of a mistake. Now, Puck has a scary growing army of these immortals. The War Prism also coming on out, but the yeah, War Prism- Puck has to expand, right? He can't really- I don't Yeah, think he can't really be- It's like trying to be aggressive without stim. He doesn't it, have warp gate. Yeah, exactly. You, it's similar. It's it, Obviously, it's the difference of reinforcing versus the power of the units you have, but it is still one of those things you really don't feel comfortable moving out with it. Uh, maybe, maybe if he can pick off the Phoenix, you can go for like an immortal drop, but the Phoenix just completely shut that down. Hmm. And a fourth Phoenix now out. Fifth Phoenix is actually out as it is still rallying across the map, maybe, or actually, where is that fifth Phoenix? Haas is going to be the first to expand then. Go. Makes sense. I mean, he has total air control or map Puck, control. Puck forced to play this game like a Terran. He's got all <laughs> his gateways, building units, one at a time. Well, he's been able to keep up in terms of saturation, but you're right. The natural expansion is going to be a little bit slower. Warpgate is almost done, and I wonder, I guess, once you have... Three stalkers out is enough to at least sort of push yeah. back. As the soon Phoenix. as as soon as his observer saw the Phoenix move away, he immediately took his natural. Obviously, the Phoenix yeah. cannot kill a uh, a building. So yeah, and the Phoenix actually not getting any kills on probes. One Phoenix getting very low on hit points, and Puck having that natural expansion going on up. We do have void rays now being produced here for Haas. This is the more interesting question. What is Haas's follow up? Is it just going to be void rays? Void rays in large numbers can be scary in PvP, but Puck is not the kind of player to let his opponent get up to those scary numbers. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna take a lot of Void Rays to make that work. And I'm actually kind of concerned here because he's moving out and Haas is like, yeah, well, I can just pick, kill a bunch of your stuff with my Phoenix, so, right? So yes and no. I'm but he won't have lifts. Concerned. He won't have lifts to go back home and defend. Exactly. Uh, Haas has to be very careful with how much energy he uses because his army back at home is two sentries and adept in a Void Ray versus 
this many stalkers, a handful of immortal sentries. sentries, a war prism that can now reinforce. I am really worried right now for Haas. Yeah, all right, so the Phoenix looks like he recalled them. He came across, came back across very yep. quickly, but this is gonna be so hard to make work. I have no idea. I. I yeah, How he's, he's got to pick up that Warp off. Prism for, first of all, to prevent additional Warp Prisms and also the Micro from Puck. Yep, we're going to see we're gonna see some, some really good Prism Micro to Puck. There's the Guardian Shield. Here's everything to fight. Void Ray is here. Void oh. Ray, turn it prismatically aligned. There we go. Trying to take the Immortals out of the fight with the Phoenix, but the Phoenix are going down one by one. Prismatic alignment. Void Ray going to be running out of its charge very soon. He lifts up some more of these immortals. The zealots get warped in, and shield battery does work. But that guardian shield actually helped a lot too. And the prism just picking up the targeted down stalkers, and, and it survives. Go. Shield batteries are out of juice, and that is a victory there for Puck as the pros get pulled. GG gets called. Puck goes up one zero. Puck, good job defending against the cannon rush. We get to see a little bit of the Haas madness, and <laughs> King's Cove getting the robotics facility out. Really big there. Really yeah. Important. Uh, it definitely got a bit scary for a bit, just because the cannons were making some progress. I was a little bit surprised we didn't see shield batteries, but it is, it's again one of those questions. Whenever you're cannon rushing, you're saying, okay, every shield battery I get is delaying all of the tech and the structures I want to get back at home, if I want to transition out, if I want to make an adept or two to try and get some more worker kills, those all cost more minerals, and it does take away from your ability to continue pushing forward. Because it's not just about keeping the cannons up, it's about moving them into range yep. of the mineral line or the nexus so puck yeah. doing a great job just denying that it got very very dicey but he was able to hold did a great job mm -hmm. that's uh you know puck has been a, a very story wcs competitor um the big results he had a hard time coming by but he has been a, a contender in yeah. wcs for a very long time especially he, he always had this weird thing where his PBZ was like one of the biggest things. I remember back in the day when we had yep. the Koreans playing in WCS America, I would go back. Guys like Hyun, he would have really big upsets. His micro with units like Blink Stalkers was insane. Yeah, and a lot of that kind of play was off of some great play with actually the robotics facility. And yeah. in fact, he would go for Colossus drops and all kinds of Colossus things. And if you want to be as cool as Puck, there is exactly one way you can do it. And that's just to get the War Chest skin for the robotics facility so you can make Colossus drops happen or Disruptor drops happen like Puck or just defend cannon rushes like Puck with that yeah. awesome robotics facility skin from the War Chest. That is an intimidating, intimidating looking robotics facility. I would be I afraid to photon on cannon rush that yeah unless you of course had the war chest yourself and used the forged photon cannons <laughs> actually the only strategic response that works yeah uh but i will note that a lot of the defense and probably the experience for puck not only just defending cannon rushes on the north american server this is one thing i love about puck by the way he has a lot of american pride there's a lot of pride for the north american server specifically and he a lot of the other players they'll play on the European server, they'll play on the Korean server, depending on whether they're East or West Coast. Puck plays a lot on the North American server because he wants the North American server to have good players on it pr uh, practicing. He gets experience getting Cannon Rush and all that stuff. Players like Tesla or Rays and whatnot I was gonna say, will do it. Yeah, say America um, is, is a good server to play on. It is. To practice against and the greater cheese. And Puck actually himself has been doing some cannon rushes the past couple of weeks. This is actually what I was holding on to. And it's, I think some of that, seeing things from the other side, you get a better glimpse of where some people may be a little bit more limited on resources, if, et cetera. What if they cannon rush each other, Fear Dragon? If they do, I World don't think implode. it's gonna be on this map because this is a terrible map for cannon rushing. So that means they'll both do it. That That is the, typical logic you would expect yeah well we'll see where things go as we move into game number two of our winner's match starting down here in the bottom left hand ish corner of the map we have the blue protoss player from root gaming sitting up one zero it is Pac. oh puckums I think the strongest player going into this group. He's up against perhaps the most notorious player of this one in the Northeast. We have the Red Protoss player. He is Haas. I would definitely agree with you on that, by the way. Uh, I think Puck, despite being the second seed in this group, 
Um, he has not quite gotten the, as big results on the big stages. Uh, he's done some. He's gotten some decent runs, making to round 32 group stage and stuff, and maybe some of these uh, 16 round of 16 finishes at WCS events. But Haas had a lot of WCS points from last year thanks to that second place finish, where he went up against Cyril, took a game or two off of him, and then did get knocked out. But he took out some big names with some very cheesy, cheeky play. And that did give him a lot of WCS points to become the number one seed. So while he is the number one seed, I would still, like you, I think, give a bit of favoritism to Puck in this series. Yeah, I mean, Haas is uh, is a very good player. But, you know, I think when we talk about his builds and his strategies, they've, they've been nerfed a bit, right? We talk about the shield battery hit point mm -hmm. nerf, um, his shenanigans with proxy, robo, and shield batteries and cannons against Zerg I don't think are going to be anywhere near as good this year because, you know, they also increase the... I mean, the Robo itself is cheaper, but getting the Immortals out is going to cost a bit more. Yep. And since I think it's... what it's one less It's one less bile for Ravagers to kill those batteries. Twilight Council? I think this is going to be... A, it might be a Twilight Council. Proxy now, Twilight. Puck is going to move into this base and see one pylon. So this should immediately sound alarm bells, and I wouldn't be surprised if Puck starts sending some probes around to this location over here is a very common proxy location over here i mean we saw one over here earlier on today and we still don't actually see anything funky going on from haas just yet it's just the there's the twilight there's the twilight okay so uh usually this is going to go into a dark shrine this is something that puck should also be thinking about and i actually want to just note that puck played a pvp earlier today and, and when he Stargate. didn't, and when he, oh, okay, that is a bit different. <gasps> mm, no, okay. Do you think he intends for this to be scouted, and then instead does something? I, I don't know. He has enough resources to get blink charge or resonating glaives. So yeah, I was thinking there was this, there was this very weird series that Haas it played like shot. years ago. Is he gonna go Phoenix DT? Phoenix DT so, and so, Protoss? So the weird thing... How do you kill the Observer? The, you get an Oracle and you Revelation the Oracle. What? No. So. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> How could that possibly work? Observers I don't... Build, I hey, don't... Observers don't build that slow. I don't know that that's actually going to happen. Yeah. I don't actually even think it's necessarily going to be the case, but... It's Haas. It, it's a possibility. Anything's a possibility with this guy. That's true. The Adepts, I don't know why I'm looking oh for logic boy. in Haas PvP. The Adepts getting picked off is actually quite unideal here for Haas. Because sure, he gets a little bit of scouting information, but he doesn't actually see the Twilight Council. He just sees a handful of Stalkers and doesn't see the Robo or anything. He might be able to infer it, but the Robo already is starting up is really nice here because that Robo should finish up right before the DT warping can happen. And this is the closest pylon. It's going to take a while. This is a slow a pylon warp. Uh, Phoenix should come out soon, too. He does have enough energy on it. The sentry just got the energy Oop. that it needs. Dept. Oh, Puck is happy to let that Adept Shade finish up. He can two-shot it. So the Oracle is going to come in from the backside. The shield now. battery's there. The shield battery's enough to keep the probes safe. Oracle has to back off. Robo is almost done. Dark Shrine is done. Where's the DTs? Where they at? Mm. So he has, or he's going to have enough energy for a stasis trap soon. If he could bait a bunch of the units into the stasis trap, that'd be nice. There is apparently a proxy pylon from Puck going up inside the main base of Haas, where there's only one adept, but he's not cancel that. Going for yeah. the Maximus Black pylon. Ooh, Oracle getting picked off. Revelation being thrown down there. That is not ideal. Puck is not going for the Observer, though. He's going for a Warp Prism, and his units are out of position to go for the whole position. Uh, but we don't actually have any Dark Templar Warp Yeah, thing. he's not even trying to use it. That's so weird. Why? I he, th I think he saw the Robo and he just assumed because you don't know that a War Prison's coming out first, right? It could have just been so. I an guess observer. He's, he's gonna wait for Puck to attack him before he shows his hand. I think it might be a desperation. This is just a bad situation kind of move. But imagine this: an observer pops out first, and imagine there was one more Chrono Boost on Blink, so Blink finished up ten seconds or so faster. The DT walks in. And not only is there an Observer, but there's also Blink Stalkers to catch the DT, even if your reaction time is perfect. It, you just Oh, yeah, he sees him moving out. He sees him moving out. Immediately, yep. two DTs warp in for the counterattack. I do like this. There is an Observer out now, and it is back at home as well. But this does mean that Haas can use some DTs on the defensive to try and clean things up. The Shield Battery going to keep that Immortal alive as well. Here we go. They're going to spread out between both bases. 
Oh, one, oh, the one in the natural pulls back. I think uh, that's a little bit weird. Oh, he's trying, to time, he's trying to time it so that both of the DTs hit at the same time and reveal themselves at the exact same moment. Puck is going to try and poke in with the Stalkers, but immediately recalls back. Already lost five workers. Recalls to the natural. One DT going to just try and escape Yeah, the out Prism of it. actually got probes into the main base, too. So Puck still oh, got some yeah. harass done. He still did a good job Two there. Depths. Cleans up the DTs. Yeah, cleans up the one. One does DT. get away. Yeah, the one in the natural gets away. Uh, that was overall a decent trade there for Haas because he got up his natural safely. He's getting up his immortal count, and he only lost one DT to force a recall and kill seven workers. Uh, it is still a scary spot, though, because Puck has a lot of stalkers with Blink, still has that warp prism, still able to put on some pressure. Uh, didn't actually end up scouting out that <laughs> proxy. And Blink is actually coming out for Haas. All right. This game's... Uh Going to progress forward at a reasonable pace. Haas has a lot of probes. Definitely concerned about the economy of Puck here. Mm -hmm. Now, the Hallucinate Phoenix moves in and sees a few units. And he does move forward and see that it's not actually that many. But this is enough with the Observer to kill off one or two DTs. Uh, and that means that Puck can be aggressive on the other side of the map safely. Puck is going to do what Puck does, and that's the, the Blink Stalker Micro. Let's see what he can do here. We do have the battery. Mine's we do have immortal. the Immortal. He's going to go focus down the first Immortal, trying to burst through. Oh. And that Warp Prism Micro grabbing the Weakened Stalker is going pretty well so far. Trying to get the next Immortal. Needs to be careful. I mean, he has Blink and the Prism, so almost infinite charges of Blink. And he's going to pull everything out there. Yep. Good micro from Puck, and doesn't overcommit for that Immortal. I thought for a second he might try and go for the aggressive blink on, uh, knowing that that shield battery was starting to run low on energy, and it is pretty much out of energy. So Puck goes back in for round two. Probes already pulled off the line, and Haas is in dire straits right now. As we end up oh, seeing more Splunk on. Straight in on that Immortal, snaps it up, yep. and the rest of the units coming out of the natural expansion, but Puck has obliterated the army here of Ooh. our Taiwanese Protoss. Oh, the DT, no though. Yeah, no observers, so the DTs are working away at this army, but sniping off Immortal after Immortal. This is all that Haas was building up to, and he lost eight workers. Puck is going to be losing a lot of stalkers, sure, but he also killed his opponent's army. And the economy, by the way, got mm -hmm. evened up, so same worker count now for both players. If you're Puck, I guess you make sure you have an observer still at home, and then you make another one or bring another one of them out. Yep. That DT is, uh, he's putting in overtime. Puck has four observers, by the way. So uh, they're just, none of them are here. <laughs> and here it is. There we go. Uh, Pylon gets sniped off, tries to blink on top of the DT, doesn't quite have the observer moving fast enough. We're putting another round of stalkers, bro. Let's go. Yeah. Just dealing with the DT on the other side of the map. Look Cleans that, that up. That force field. He's like, you can't, I'm not even going to let you run by me mm -hmm. into that base. No, uh uh. Puck is playing super duper well. This observer, it's always a little bit dangerous when you decide to stick your, uh, where do you send your observers, especially when they're DTs potentially on the map. Yeah. Because uh, if you lose too many of them, it does become problematic. But Puck has four, so he should be in a good position. He's taken a third base. He's got a big enough army to defend this. Yeah, I mean, if he controls as well as he has so far already in this game, he should be totally fine. He has a really nice army. There's just stalkers with, with the DT. Zealots have charged. He's got charged zealots in his own bleed stalkers. And there you go. He's going to start pushing in towards this. Guardian shield gets popped on both sides. The zealots doing a great job soaking up that damage in the front. The observer is here for Puck to get rid of the Dark Templar. His observer might die, but there are no more DTs here, so it's no longer an issue. Yep. Uh, Haas sniping off that observer might feel comfortable trying to warp in a few more DTs with the next warp in round, but he already started up the Stalkers, so he's already committed to this for now. Stalkers making their way forward here. Nice blink micro from both sides. Haas does have a very mild Stalker lead, I believe. Uh, about, yeah. I mean, seven well, Puck's, workers. Puck's but putting zealots. his warp ins towards those High Templar now, so he's, yep. he's adding in Archons. And wow, four Ooh. DTs. Oh my goodness. Uh, you better get that observer, Haas. He gets it. Is there mm -hmm. still another one for Puck? Puck has two more. He observers. has two more, but I don't think they're with the army right now. And these, now th these four DTs are going to be oh. a problem. But he's already pulling back. Okay, he's, he's already got, pulling back. He's got his back. other observer here. He's got his other observer here. That's really big. The DTs all die instantly. Mm -hmm. Very important. And now Puck goes back to work, and he gets the Sipes. observer of yep. Haas. So Haas can no longer clean up his uh, his observers. And that's really what Haas is relying on. Remember, this is in a lot of ways like a two base all in here. He doesn't have a third base. He doesn't have any tech point transition. He's up against a bunch of Archons, so he can't just warp in Zealots anymore. It's Stalkers that are 
Not going to scale that well later on. And some and he's good still, Warp Prism Micro. Still doing the Warp Prism Micro, as Puck always does. GG, Puck is out of here in first place. Group H for Honeysuckle. <laughs> well done, and congratulations to Puck. He definitely dominates that series, swatting away all of the shenanigans that Haas had to throw at him. And Haas definitely had some shenanigans to throw at him, but he will have to save it for the lower or the decider match. Inside. Decider match, that's right. And really good play by Puck. I'm a huge fan of Puck, been yeah. loving watching this guy play for years, always Great entertaining. Stream. He's, he's a very entertaining streamer as well. He's just uh, P U C K K on Twitch. He is awesome, and uh, you're never you're gonna see very few people that control as well as he does with uh, with the War Prism, the Blink Stalkers, and late, lately, last night, a couple times I checked in, also seen some great disruptor play from him. Yeah, he's also great at Marine Splits. It turns out as he plays a lot of Zone Control, the arcade game in the StarCraft II arcade. There you have it. Uh, Really, really awesome player, and congratulations, Puck. Moving on to the next group stage, but as we take a look, we do still have one final series in this group oh, stage oh left. Yeah. It is Firefly versus Haas, another Protoss versus Protoss. What other shenanigans does Haas have up his sleeve? Find out in about six minutes.